It's always been overshadowed by the more popular and more powerful 12 gauge, but there's nothing wrong with relying on a 20 gauge shotgun to defend your home. At close range, 20 gauge buckshot is typically just as effective as 12 gauge, but it can have a lot less recoil. Less recoil usually leads to better shot placement, and for a lot of people it also means they're more likely to practice. Now normally I'm a big fan of this kind of thing. If you can give up a small perceived ballistic advantage and in exchange get the ability to shoot the gun better, that's a worthwhile trade-off. But even so, I don't usually recommend a 20 gauge shotgun over a 12 gauge for home defense. And it's not because it isn't powerful enough, it has a lot more to do with the lack of industry support for the 20 gauge. The shotguns you can buy today that are set up for self-defense are almost all based on shotguns used by law enforcement and military. For the last century or more, almost 100% of their shotguns have been 12 gauge. So all of the firearm industry's research and new technology for fighting shotguns has been devoted to the 12 gauge, not the 20 gauge. It's not really all that popular in the general consumer market either. Here at Lucky Gunner, we sell about 10 times more 12 gauge shells than 20 gauge. It might be the second most common size of shotgun shell, but it's still not especially popular. So between that and the lack of R&D, there's really not much incentive for the gun and ammo companies to support 20 gauge. It's primarily viewed as something for young hunters who need a shotgun with a little less weight and recoil than their dads. As a result, it's kind of an uphill struggle to put together a 20 gauge shotgun that's really optimized for home defense. Ideally, you want a short 18 inch barrel that's easier to maneuver inside. You wanna be able to fit the shotgun to the individual shooter with different size stocks and forends. And it's nice to have access to options like light mounts, sights, extended magazine tubes, and ammo carriers. As far as commonly available 20 gauge shotguns that fit at least most of those criteria, you're pretty much limited to the Remington 870 and the Mossberg 500 pump actions. And at least right now, Remington's not even making the 870 tactical in 20 gauge. With either model, the variety and quality of available upgrades is nowhere close to what you would have with the 12 gauge version of those guns. Now you can make it work and you can get a pretty nice home defense 20 gauge setup if you put some effort into it, but there's not much you can do about the lack of ammo selection. With 12 gauge, there are dozens of good options for ammo that is specifically designed for personal protection, ranging in sizes from double aught on down to number four buckshot, and that includes plenty of low recoil loads. For 20 gauge, on the other hand, there are really just a handful of options from the major ammo companies, and they're almost all loads made with the smaller buckshot sizes like number two, three, and four. Now that might not be a big problem in itself, but if the main reason you're using a 20 gauge is to take advantage of reduced recoil, these buckshot loads don't necessarily do that. 20 gauge shotguns tend to weigh a little bit less than a similarly equipped 12 gauge by about a pound or a pound and a half. These guns handle really well and small statured shooters will appreciate the weight reduction during a long practice session. But less weight in the gun means you're gonna get an increase in felt recoil. So depending on what load you're using, you might actually experience more recoil from a 20 gauge than a 12 gauge. To give you an example, a few days ago, I went out to the range with a 20 gauge Mossberg Maverick 88 that I had borrowed. And I also brought along my registered short barreled Remington 870 12 gauge. I went through a few boxes of buckshot running some simple drills with both guns and I didn't notice much difference in recoil. If anything, the 12 gauge shot a little bit softer. With the Mossberg, I was shooting the Federal Personal Defense 20 gauge load with 24 pellets of number four buckshot. And in the Remington, I was using some Fiocchi law enforcement low recoil double aught buckshot. Altogether, the 24 pellets in the Federal load weigh 1.14 ounces and the advertised velocity is 1100 feet per second. The nine double aught pellets in the Fiocchi load weigh 1.11 ounces, traveling at 1150 feet per second. The Mossberg shotgun weighs 5.56 pounds and my 870 is 7.1 pounds. So we've got two loads that have very similar weight and velocity, but one is being fired from a gun that weighs about 20% less than the other. It doesn't require any advanced math to see why I didn't notice a reduction in recoil by shooting a 20 gauge in this particular case. And the Fiocchi buckshot is not an unusually light double lot load. You'll find roughly the same weight and velocity with a lot of popular defensive buckshot loads like Federal Flight Control and Remington Reduced Recoil Law Enforcement. But for 20 gauge, low recoil buckshot loads 
are almost unheard of. They're really tough to come by if you can find them at all. Now those are some of the reasons why I typically suggest a 12 gauge with low recoil ammo rather than a 20 gauge for anyone who's in the market for a home defense shotgun. And if you really wanna cut down on recoil, take a look at a quality semi-auto 12 gauge like the Beretta 1301. Now, if you've got a 20 gauge setup that you like and it's working for you, I don't think you need to change anything. 20 gauge has a lot of potential as a home defense solution. I just think it's probably more trouble than it's worth for most people. And if you've been thinking about getting a 20 gauge as a way to arm a spouse or a friend or someone you know who's not really a shooter, Keep in mind that a pump action shotgun in general is just not a very good novice weapon. It actually requires quite a bit of effort to be able to run one competently without having to think about it. As an alternative for a less dedicated shooter, you might want to consider introducing them with something like a pistol caliber carbine or maybe even a full size revolver. They need something with a simple manual of arms that's easy to remember how to use and not intimidating if they take it to the range. A pump action shotgun, even in 20 gauge, is not any of those things. But whether you are running a 20 gauge or a 12, the best way to mitigate recoil is with proper shooting technique in conjunction with a very short stock. I've got a video about that called Taming the 12 Gauge, so check that out if you haven't seen it. And if you wanna support our channel, the next time you need some ammo, be sure to get it from us at luckygunner.com.